Hi there, it's Jenna from McGuire here for Studio Calico. Each month I'm going to be doing a different technique video using the kits. And for this month, October, I'm doing a canvas featuring fringe flowers. And this uses the October kit plus all of the add-ons. This is the canvas that I did. It's 12 by 12 and it's covered with all the goodies that I got in my kits. And I'm going to show you um, lots of fun things on it. First, I'm going to show you painting with the Mr. Huey's Color Mist. So you can see this background here, it used to be white, and I painted it this shiny blue using the Mr. Huey's Color Mist. Now, I, I could have sprayed the canvas, but I kind since it's a big canvas, I didn't want to make a mess. I love to paint with it. So I'm just spraying some of the heirloom blue, and this is just a little bit of water, and then I'm going to use the classic shine from Mr. Huey's. This gives it a nice pearly shine, which I just love. And I'm going to mix this up and paint it onto my canvas. Now, the reason I added a little water was just to kind of make the color go a little further. Also, this is a very concentrated color, which is awesome. But for this, I didn't need it to be that dark. So adding the water just kind of makes it go farther and lightens it up just a touch. So I'm going to go ahead and just paint on a thin layer over this whole canvas. And you'd be surprised how little of the color mist it actually takes to paint the canvas. So now I've done one coat. I wanted to go and do a really shiny coat on top of it. So this is lots of the classic shine. You can see how beautiful it is in there. And lots of water. So it's kind of like a really watered down shine that I'm just painting over the whole canvas just so it can have a little more shine in the end. So here I'll tilt it in the light so you can kind of see what the shine looks like. But it's really hard to capture how pretty it is in real life. You just can't get that with regular paint. So next I wanted to show you how I did fringe flowers. I did lots of these on the canvas and you can see them here. Now this, this is a really fun uh, technique to do and it's a great way to use up some of your favorite pattern papers. So I'm just cutting a strip from one of my um, papers from the kits and I'm taking some thin score tape. You could use wonder tape or any adhesive really. You just want a thin line of adhesive on one edge. And I just put it right down there. This is uh, an eighth of an inch thick, so it's nice and thin. And I, the, the thinner your adhesive strip here, the flatter your flower will end up in the end. Now I have these Martha Stewart fringe scissors here. And I'll show you in a minute how you can do this with regular scissors. You don't have to have these fancy scissors. This just makes it faster. And I'm doing little fringe cuts all the way up to that adhesive strip that I've done. And this goes by pretty quick, actually. I did lots of, the canvases, uh, of these flowers for the canvas, and it goes by quickly. But you're just going to do fringe all the way down the strip, all the way up to that adhesive strip. And you can see that here. Looks pretty cool like this. Now before I um, assemble the flower, I'm going to add adhesive to the other side. You don't have to do adhesive on both sides. But I find that the flower goes together easier and stays together better if I have adhesive on both sides. So now I'm going to take the release paper off the two sides. And here we go on the other side also. And now I'm going to start to roll it. Now whatever paper you want to have show at the, on the flower in the end, you want to have that rolled inside. So I want this polka dot to show on the end. So I'm rolling the paper so that the polka dot's on the inside. So whatever you see on the outside is not what you'll see on the final flower. So I'm going to keep rolling this and it starts to look kind of like a tassel. And I want to make sure I keep that edge flat there, where the rolled edge there where the adhesive is. Um, that way it'll sit flatter on the canvas or on your paper or whatever. So I'm just going to keep rolling. And since there's lots of adhesive on here, this won't come undone. So you can see what it looks like here. Now I decided this was kind of too big, too long of uh, petals. So I'm just going to cut some of it off here. Um, I could have made it narrower when I started. But once I put it together, I realized it was kind of too big. So I just cut some of the petals off. And now what I'm going to do is I pinched it real good so I know it's adhered. And I'm going to pull the petals apart. And there you can see the polka dots starting to show. I'm just going to keep spreading and end up with this great fun fringe flower. And you just keep doing it. Now you could leave it like this and put it on a stem and put them in a vase, but I want to make it nice and flat so that this is something that you could put on a card or on a scrapbook page if you wanted to. Now you could add the flower to your project this way with that center um, showing, but I usually use it the other way and use this as the front of the flower, but it's totally up to you. And then I like to go through and cut some of the petals shorter just so it looks a little more fun. Give it a little haircut. These flowers are so much fun to make, and since I'm using the kits, all the papers go together really well, so you can create a canvas like this. Now I wanted to show you how I added the but button to the center of this flower and all the buttons on the canvas. I just used this inexpensive white string that I get in the knitting area of my um, local craft store. 
and I'm just putting it through the buttons. I think buttons look so much better when they have the string through them. It just looks more finished. Then I pinch the ends off to the side on the back there. So you're kind of holding them off to the side. Now I'm just going to take a foam adhesive square here. You could use a glue dot for this if you wanted to. But that kind of holds all the string there. And now I'm going to cut that off the edge there. And this gets you um, away with not having a big knot bulk behind the button. So it just sits on there real nice. And this is how I did all the buttons on the canvas. Again, doing that little trick eliminates that big bulky knot on the back of a button. So here's all the buttons that I did on the canvas. Now one thing I wanted to point out is after I glued these all on with foam dots or, or glue dots, I did go back and do a little squirt of glossy accent behind them all so I know that they won't come off. You could use any other strong adhesive, but glossy accents I really like because they hold really tight. So everything has a little bit of glossy accent behind it. Now I wanted to show you how I create a larger fringe flower. The one I did before was a little bit smaller. Now for a larger one, this is the trick I do. This is just a little piece of felt. I wanted something kind of thick. I'm putting some adhesive down the center and I'm going to roll this. And this is basically just a placeholder. It's going to be inside my fringe flower just to hold it so that my flower ends up with a bigger center. So I'll show you what I mean in a minute. But I wanted to show you here, look at I used regular scissors to cut this fringe. And it's just as easy to do as using the fringe scissors. Okay, so now I've got this fringe strip here. And I'm going to start wrapping it around my felt kind of holding place here. Now the reason I'm doing this is this makes my flower bigger and instead of doing a wider strip, when you do a wider strip with lots of fringe, it ends up with these long kind of um, thin petals that are kind of pathetic looking. So by doing this, this makes the flower bigger but keeps the petals nice and full. So you see that little felt piece in the middle? I'm just going to pop that right out. You could have done this around a paintbrush too or something. But you can see now that it's got a bigger center, but the petals are still nice and full. So you got a nice big flower. And I did all different sizes on the canvas here. Little ones, big ones, medium ones. It's fun to just change the size up. Now I'm going to show you kind of how I put this canvas together. Again, I put everything down with foam dots. I have um, some with glue dots. I put glossy accents behind them all. But I also put little punch circles on here, some buttons, all different things from my kit. And I wanted to show you how I did that heart area, how I blocked that area out. Just took a piece of scrap paper here, um, and I'm just kind of drawing a heart on here the best that I can. And I'm going to cut this out. Now, if you have a silhouette or a die cut machine, you could have cut a perfect heart for this. But I don't know. I find this to be um, pretty quick and easy to do. So I'm just going to cut this. And then I'll kind of play around with it and make the heart a little bit smaller until I'm happy with the final final piece here. Now all this is going to be is like a holding spot for me again where I can put all my embellishments around it on the canvas and then when I take this away I'll have a perfect heart area left to put my message in. I didn't actually adhere the heart here I just kind of held it in place while I started assembling pieces around it. Now I wanted to show you how I added the letter stickers in the center. This is just a fun little tip that I like to do. So I've got these um, letters here. My, um, my stepdaughter calls herself Awesome Audrey, so I wanted to make this for her. I just take a piece of uh, acetate. It could be from packaging or whatever. I happen to have this acetate ha um, tag handy. But I just put my letter stickers, I assemble them right on the edge of a piece of acetate. Um, this helps me with getting the right spacing when I put it on my project. So I've assembled the whole word here, and it's just kind of hanging off the edge of the acetate. Now I can take this and see right through it and put it right in the spot. Some people do this on the edge of a ruler, but I think this acetate's much easier to do. And now what I do is I press the tops down onto my project where I want them to be, and I'll kind of hold it there, and then I'll just pull my canvas out from underneath it, and then my letters will be in the perfect position. Now I wanted to show you, these are the glossy accents that I use behind all my little pieces to make sure that they, didn't, they don't end up moving. I also use glossy accents for a nice finishing touch, um, like a nice shine on anything. One of the best things to do with it is if you have these plain letter stickers, it kind of gives them a little bit of life by adding a thin coating of glossy accents on the top. You could even do a thick coating, but by covering them, it just makes them pop a little bit more. It gives them a little bit of dimension, and you can see the finished project there. And you can see how the canvas all comes together really well, the colors do, because I used the colors in the kit. They kind of dictate what to use, and it makes it really simple. Thanks for watching the Studio Calico video, and we'll see you next month.